There you go. Wasn't too hard. G'day folks, Uncle Nackus here. Now look, the miter saw, or if you're in America, also known as the chop saw, as a beginner woodworker, would have to be one of the most important tools you can have in your workshop. And to prove that point, I've had this old steed for about 12 years, maybe even longer, and I use it basically on every single job that I do. Now currently it's looking a little worse for wear, but this saw has done literally thousands of cuts and still going strong. And with that in today's video, I want to share with you my top seven basic miter saw tips that'll help you get started on the right foot. Alrighty, let's fire this beast up. Now tip number one is pretty self-explanatory and you've probably heard it a million times. Maybe even two million times. And that is no ifs, no buts, always use hearing and eye protection. Now these machines can be pretty noisy, hence the earmuffs, and they can also randomly throw out pieces of wood at a great rate of knots, which can easily damage that soft tissue of the eye, hence the eyewear. So you've just got to be careful, use your common sense, and wear the protective gear. And speaking about common sense, tip number two, most normal people when using a miter saw will hold the wood or the timber here, and the saw blade is over there. Or vice versa, they hold the timber or wood here and the blade comes down there. And for the record, the saw's not plugged in, so we've got no dramas. Now, the mortal sin with using a miter saw, and I see a lot of people do it, I don't know why, is they'll bring their hand across the saw blade to hold the timber to complete the cut. Now, trust me, it's only a matter of time before that technique ends up in tears. Now, tip number three relates to this mark here, which you see on a lot of miter saw bases, and that's the recommended hand positioning or the safe zone for your hands away from that blade. And it's a really good reminder because we all get a bit blase at times using these machines. And to make that stand out even more, you can paint some of this red nail polish inside that groove, which will be even a bigger reminder. Now, I know a lot of you guys have this in your toolboxes, blokes like Sumo, Ben Hollist, and I think Mark Dana has some as well. Those blokes are always redoing their nails. Now for this next tip, do yourself a favor, and if you find yourself having to cut multiple pieces of wood or timber to the same size, just simply attach a block with a square end, and this is known as a stop block, to the fence of the miter saw to your desired length, and then attach that with a clamp, and you're good to go. Too easy. And there you have it. Quick, easy, and all cut to exactly the same size. Perfect. Now just a quick cautionary tip when using a stop block, and by the way, we're not plugged in, and that is, if you can, resist the urge to lift your blade until you've finished your cut and the blade has stopped spinning. Now the reason for that is that currently, this piece here is tight between the stop block and the blade. Now if that blade is spinning in an upwards direction, as you lift, it can catch the piece just like that, which can send it hurtling back to you at a thousand miles per hour, which never ends well. Now my bonus tip for when you're using a stop block is that you'll notice on mine, down the bottom here, I have a small 45 degree angled cut. And the reason for that is that if your stop block only has a square flat face and it doesn't have a 45 degree angle down here, you can get a build up of sawdust on your miter saw base plate. And over time, that sawdust can get jammed between the piece and the stop block, therefore altering the length of your cut. Now the great thing about having that 45 degree angle down the bottom there is that it helps eliminate the issue of the sawdust buildup between the piece that we're trying to cut and the stop block. Because as you can see, the sawdust just gets channeled into that little cavity down the bottom, therefore not messing up the length of your cut. Beautiful. 
Now the next question you may want to ask is, but what if I need to cut multiple pieces of wood to the same size, but I can't clamp the stop block to the miter saw because the pieces are too long? Simple, just add an extension fence to your miter saw, then just simply clamp the stop block to that. I'll show you how to do it. Just go out and find a long piece of wood and then just simply place it hard up against the fence of the miter saw. Then all you need to do is to attach this long piece of wood to the fence through the back via two holes on either side of the blade. Now some saws come with those holes already pre-drilled, mine didn't, so I had to drill those myself. And then all you need to do is to get your tape measure and hook it over the end of that fresh new cut. Come back your desired distance, say it's 400 millimeters, and place a mark on your spanking new extension fence. Go grab yourself a square and square that line down. And then all we need to do is to get our stop block and attach it to our extension fence with a clamp, lining that edge up with our mark just like that and we're good to go there you go works like a charm now this next tip is an absolute little ripper and we'll be making a zero clearance plate for the miter saw base now i know it sounds complicated but it's not so if you follow me, I'll show you what it does and how to make one. And just very quickly, if you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe and notification button down below. Good stuff. Now if you take a look at the base of your mitre saw, you'll notice that the insert plate, this yellow thing here, has quite a large throat. That's that gap. Now it's made that way to give the saw blade room when doing a beveled cut. Now for most carpentry jobs, having that large gap there is perfectly fine. But if you lay your board on the base, nice and flat, you'll notice that where that gap is, right there, the board isn't fully supported. So what happens is, when your blade comes down to make the cut, you'll finish up with a nice clean cut on the top, nice clean cut on the face, but the bottom and the back will have tear out. Which is what you can see here with the top and the front is nice and clean, but the back edge and the bottom has tear out. Now the other issue with having that large gap there is that if you're cutting a slither off your piece of wood, it can actually fall down inside that gap, making it an absolute pain in the backside to get out. So to rectify those problems, we're going to make a zero clearance plate. So just find yourself a thin sheet of ply, about the length of your saw, and a piece of wood to go on top. Now that cut's been made, this is essentially a zero clearance plate, which means that when you lay your board on top, it's fully supported without that big gap down here, which should help minimize tear out on the bottom and on the back. And if you find yourself having to cut a small sliver, it's a hard word to say, because this is a zero clearance plate, that small sliver won't fall down the gap. Now if we just check out this cut, you'll see there's a little bit of tear out on the bottom. It's not too bad. And the back, well that's virtually non-existent. Good stuff. Now this next tip I think is absolute genius. And it has to do with the safe cutting of small pieces of wood with your miter saw. Now I actually stole this idea from the guys over at Toolmetrics, so I've got to give credit where credit's due. And here it is, what a cracking little jig. Now I have plans to make one of these down below in the description box, so if you want to have a crack at it, go down there and check it out. 
Now the issue we have with cutting small pieces of wood is that because your fingers are so close to that blade, it makes it incredibly dangerous. So with my jig, I've glued a rubber pad to the ply and then I've glued some sandpaper to that rubber pad. And that allows me to apply pressure to the top of that piece of wood, holding it safely in place. At the same time, keeping my fingers in hand a safe distance away from that blade, making for a safe cut. Love it. Now I should also say that to safely use one of these jigs, it's important to have that zero clearance plate in place. Now this next tip relates to the cutting of dowel, especially small sections of dowel with your miter saw. I've got to give these dowels up. <laughs> They're killing me. Now cutting dowel, especially small sections of dowel, can be a little tricky as it's hard to hold and it can also unexpectedly spin your fingers as the blade hits it. So to alleviate those issues, I've gone out and I've made this snazzy little jig with a V in it. That's just two 45 degree angles. And all you need to do is to drop the dowel into that V, hold it hard up against the fence, and then tightly with your fingers, and you're good to go. Too easy. Now if you want some ideas as to what beginner type projects to make with your miter saw, make sure you click on one of my videos that'll be popping up over there very shortly. Great tip, knackers! Well, I hope you enjoyed and found that video useful, and if you did, a big thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Alrighty, after all that, I think I need a cup of tea. So till next time, be good, be safe, and I'm out of here. Cheers.